combined power. Welcome back to our special one-hour Winterio coming to you tonight from Mattawa. And right now we would like to give our television viewers a closer look at the centennial celebrations of this beautiful little town of Mattawa. Tonight, Winterio visits Mattawa, a town that stands where two great rivers meet, the Mattawa and the Ottawa. It's a community with a long and industrious history, a history that's being celebrated in 1984 as Mattawa marks its 100th year. The area was first explored in the 1600s by Etienne Brule and a short time later by Samuel de Champlain. Mattawa, the Indian word for meeting of the waters, later became a well-known spot along the fur trade routes and a welcome resting place for the hard-traveling voyageurs. By the 1880s, 165 families had made their homes here. The sound of the axes rang through the wooded hills, the CPR rail line crossed the river, and the spirit of commerce and development was in the air. Mattawa is still a lumbering town, and it's grown to a population of 2,600. Its two rivers have served a double purpose over the years, generating hydroelectricity and providing generations of townsfolk with unlimited potential for outdoor recreation. Winterio is happy to be here and proud to take part in Mattawa's centennial celebration. Now it's time for Winterio's third grand prize of $100,000. So, Roy, if you'll roll those machines right away for us. We still need machine number three to roll. We've got five of the six machines rolling, and we've got... There it is. Good. Thank you. Greg Beresford. Uh, well, Faye, I can only say that there's a lot of community spirit up here. You can see that because the audience is dotted with period costume, and I just had to get four of them. Now, ladies, introduce yourselves. Okay, I'm Lise Terrien, and this is my sister Lynn. This is Sylvie Leclerc, and this is Anne Novak. Thank you so much for gracing our Winterio show tonight. Now, how, how about we reach all together, and four of you press the button at the same time, okay? Away we go. Thank you. Thank you to all the ladies from Mattawa for pushing the button for our third and final grand prize for $100,000. By the way, each week I try to mention where our lottery information booth will be set up so if you have any questions about the lotteries all you have to do is go to the blue mountain mall in collingwood that's tomorrow and saturday and they'll ask and answer any questions you might have about the lottery right now for one hundred thousand dollars valerie holds up a four from the four we go to a zero next to the zero it's a five From the five, we go to another zero. And a six. The last machine produces an eight. Now we need a letter from the seventh machine to complete our third grand prize. This time we have a B. So if you have B4050068 in that order, then you've just won $100,000. All right, Val, will you please reload those machines? Just a reminder, if you had B4050068, then you won $100,000. To continue with our special one-hour Winterio tonight, yours to discover, we'd like to mention that Sault Ste. Marie lies at the junction of Lake Superior and the North Channel of Georgian Bay. It's the first city of one of the most picturesque parts of the province called Algoma. So let's take a look at part three of Winterio's discovery of the near north. Agawa, a wild land of cliffs and forest, charging white rivers and waterfalls that sparkle under the wide blue sky. It's a magnificent part of Ontario, untouched except for two parallel ribbons of steel that stretch along the river's edge. It's a wilderness that seems so remote from the bustle of the south, but it's as close as the Algoma Central Railway. The adventure begins in Sault Ste. Marie, the Sioux is the hard-working industrial center of Algoma. Its bridge spans the St. Mary's River, where the Lake Superior waters run down into Lake Huron. Here you'll find one of the busiest canals in the whole St. Lawrence Seaway. You can take a two-hour tour of the historic locks aboard the cheap Shingawak or the Bon Sioux. On shore, you'll discover one of the North's prettiest cities. Sault Ste. Marie was established by French missionaries way back in 1669. The historical riverfront area has been redeveloped, bringing back a lot of the flavor of those earlier times. Historic trails are easy to trace in the Sioux, 
from Fort Waskahagen to the old home of the Northwest Company. The Sioux is just one of the communities that thrive in the rugged shield country of Algoma. At Elliott Lake, you can visit a museum unlike any other. This is the uranium capital of the world, and it's a chance for a fascinating look at one of Ontario's important resources. At Wawa, north of the Sioux, stands a monument to the wild bird that has become a great symbol of Canada, the Canada Goose. Mount Wawa is a first-rate ski area, and in summer you can ride the chairlift to the top and take in the spectacle of Algoma. Would you like to escape to somewhere peaceful, removed from everywhere else, and pretty as a picture? St. Joseph's Island might be just the place. Camping, cottaging, or just wandering, it's a haven of outdoor relaxation just off the mainland in Lake Huron's North Channel. Everywhere you wander in Algoma, you'll find an abundance of provincial parks, picnic areas, and perfect spots for swimming, boating, and fishing. There's always something just around the bend. But if you want to get to the great heart of this land, there's a train waiting just for you in Sault Ste. Marie. The Algoma Central plunges north into the wild country every day from June to October for a nine-hour round trip to adventure. There's only one way to describe it, breathtaking. And there's only one way to be part of it. Come and ride the train. The Algoma Central Railway offers you an excursion you'll never forget. This is a part of Ontario like no other, a land of untamed majesty. Algoma was once gold rush country. You can imagine the prospectors making their way up the rushing rivers in the quest for northern treasures. Every year, the gold returns in a display of autumn color you can come and discover for yourself. There's a two-hour stopover in the Agawa Canyon. You'll have time for a picnic, time to soak in the pure atmosphere of Agawa country. There's time to do a little exploring of your own. As the sun starts to set over the trek back to the Sioux, the land takes on a character of a different hue. The Algoma rivers dance under a different light, leaving their sparkle in your memory. It's a world of untouched wonder in your own backyard, and it's all yours to discover. The bugs in